Greetings, welcome to Mr. Sean's channel. I am Mr. Sean, and this is Wander No More, visual novel just released, free to play on Steam. Links in the description below. So, because it's free to play, I'm thinking just to give a good little segment of it, maybe like 30, 30 40 minutes, see how far we go with this. And then if you like it, you can finish it off yourself. Alright, let's start this, see what happens. Wander No More takes on an alternate Earth. Though obviously based on off of feudal Japan, the towns described in Wander No More are completely fictional, as are the characters, events, and so on. Any similarities to real people based on events are entirely coincidental. Do not expect the historical references or any mention of real wars or events. Wander No More is just an indie game that's been made to be enjoyed. I understand. <laughs> I should say, I understand. Okay. When I was a boy, joining the Kodokushi, Kodokushi was my dream. Every day, every day I heard tales of their exploits, whether they were protecting our land, driving away enemy forces, or taking the fight directly to them. They were hailed as an elite military force, devoted to protecting and expanding my kingdom's reach, and always serving the people righteously. Thanks to them, we could live without fear and being conquered. In fact, our territory was actually expanded as time went on, all thanks to their tireless efforts and undying, unyielding bravery. The Kodokushi were truly our saviors, the most forthright, noble souls in the country, if not the world. Believing that from the bottom of my heart, I trained every day, single-mindedly, working towards my goal of joining the Kodokushi. I grew up to be strong, fast, flexible, beyond the reach of any of my peers. <clears throat> As a result, before I even reached adulthood, I, I was already a top contender. Stop it! As a result, before I even reached adulthood, I was already a top contender to join the Kodokushi, and the day I hit 18, I was welcomed with open arms. It was the happiest moment of my life. A decade of training had paid off. My dream had been realized. Or so I thought. Yeah, this doesn't look too happy. The village standing before me now, burned to a crisp and void of human life, was the work of the Kodokushi. It was not an enemy village. There were no combatants to be found here, nor did its inhabitants pose any threat. It was just an ordinary, everyday village, stuck between two opposing kingdoms. For the Kodokushi, the reason was enough. After joining the Kodokushi, I quickly realized that our work was neither noble nor righteous. We were not saviors of the people. We were not almighty defenders protecting innocent civilians from harm. We were a death squad. Every day we would venture forth, treading just a little bit further away from home, searching for the quote-unquote enemy. An honorable task to be sure, we would drive away any threats before we could further encroach upon our land, taking the fight away from this passerby. That's as I learned the Code of Kuchy's definition of an enemy Different, differed vastly from my own. Any village not under our community's direct control or not paying us a protection fee would be decimated. Thousands of innocent people whose only crime was not to grow up under our, our jurisdiction were killed in cold blood, never given us a chance to surrender. We slaughtered men, women, and children, even newborn babies, all in the name of our Lord, the Emperor. I should have known that they would have followed me here. Nobody leaves the Kodokushi alive, no matter how high their rank or how long they served. Now, because I choose to flee here, those people are all... <clears throat> the bastard isn't here either. Are we even going the right way? This is Captain Abatame we're talking about. He knows how we operate. He's probably heading in the opposite direction. Or just listening in our conversation. Just saying. Damn. I hadn't thought about that. Let's keep moving. Wherever he's headed, Captain Nabatame isn't here. I watched the silence from the nearby forest as the last of the Kodokushi moved on. I had successfully evaded their surveillance and hid myself by blending in with my surroundings, just as the Kodokushi themselves had taught me. So I waited patiently, biding my time until the last until left, unit you know, left my sight, at which point I could finally relax once more. Those bloodhounds don't give up. It's understandable that they wouldn't want to silence me given what I know, but to chase me this far in the kingdom? Even I wouldn't be able to evade him forever. It was still a lot. I returned to the village that Kodokushi had just passed through. I had run for weeks, and I desperately needed food and water, much more than I could find while fleeing the desolate wasteland and forest. If I hurried, maybe I could find some supplies before they were all burned to ash. I don't care what it is at this point. Plain rice, water, 
would be enough. I spoke with my mind. I wandered around the village, quickly checking each building for scraps of food. I put out fires where I could, using sheets and other miscellaneous pieces of cloth to deny auction to the flames. But as far as food was concerned, I found nothing. Only bloody corpses and scorched rations for me, leaving me without a single morsel to eat. Come on! There has to be something edible around here that hasn't been torched. How far does this village have to not be? Uh. And as I frankly searched for food, I heard a faint whimper from one of the houses. Immediately, I abandoned my search and headed to the next house over, quickly putting out the flames as I listened for the voice I had heard moments ago. But then, without another sound to go on, there was only one other room in the house. And the moment I opened the door, I saw a girl. And not doing well, she is not. Mama! Papa! Within a burning village, one in which no survivors could have remained was a young girl. A single girl, crying alone in the house storeroom, surrounded by rations. I would have killed her mere moments ago. As my gaze rested upon the girl, however, food was the last thing in my mind. All I could see was a young girl, orphaned by an unwarranted, unprovoked attack for which I was responsible. Amazing, this little girl actually managed to hide herself from the Kodokushi. I'm the one they're after, of course, and they've been pursuing me for weeks now. So it's not unthinkable that a few innocents might skip their grasp. Even so... Uh, huh? I opened the storeroom's door wider, revealing my presence to the girl sobbing within. She gazed at me in shock, not expecting to be discovered, and no doubt wondering whether I was a friend or foe. Once her eyes made their way to the ka katana at my hip, she had her answer. Mama, Papa, help me. Once again, crying out for her parents, the young girl moved back, trying to put as much distance between us as she could. She pushed back with her legs, gripping her tattered yukata on the floor while tightly holding something in her hand. Even as she almost tripped over, the girl didn't use her hands. She instead grabbed tightly at her wrist, refusing to let go. That's when I realized that this girl had lost more than just her family. This poor girl, she can't be more older than 14, yet she's already lost not only her family, family, but also a limb. Even if she survives life, it's not going to be easy for her. Everyone she kn once knew is now dead, and her village will need repairs if possible for a girl with one hand. It would be kinder of me to end her misery. I put my hand on my hilt of katana, which dangled warily at my hip. So I did so, the girl before me let out in out of the whimper and froze on the spot. Little girl, what's your name? The little girl opened her mouth to speak, but hesitated to actually respond. Her vocal cords, like the rest of her body, froze in my presence, wary that the blade at the hip was not just for show. Ch Chio, I say. The brother audible, the girl before me answered, her voice wavering as she did. Tell me, Chio, <clears throat> do you want to live? She continued to stare at me with fear in her eyes, likely interpreting my questions as a threat. I... I don't... I... I don't... I see. I drew my katana from its sheath and pointed its tip towards the girl's throat. I don't know if she really answered. I think she was more scared than really trying to be able to do anything, but let's see what happens. I thought of my days... A killing defenseless children were over, but just as once. I slowly pulled out my katana to the side, preparing to cut down the girl before me with a single strike. With a simple flick of the wrist, I would behead her, granting instant death to a girl who deserved no further pain. If that is your wish, Chio, then I... I don't want to die! I think that's what I thought she was saying. A second before I could swing my blade, Chio shouted out, finally completing her answer, which she should have probably just waited for in the first place. Immobilized by fear, her words reached my ears in fragments, giving the illusion that the girl wished for death. With strong conviction and unmistakable will to live, Chio's true desire reached my ears at last, and the blade in my hand lost all its power. What an impressive girl. Even with her entire life going up in flames, she still hasn't lost her will to live. Regardless, she's still just a young girl, and a child with one hand cannot hope to survive out here on her own. If she's going to have a shot of survival, then... All right, Chio. I understand. If you truly wish to live, then as the one responsible for all of this, it is my duty to make sure that happens. I see the blade and reach out my hand towards a shivering girl. My name is Koichiro Nabatami. 
I am a traitor on the run from my kingdom. And from this day onward, Chio, you are my daughter. Hmm. Kotsu Village, home of the merciful Nabatami family. In the year that passed since its destruction, Hotsu Village has slowly been restored. All by ourselves, Chiyo and I worked tirelessly to bring life back to the village, and although we were still a long way from the finish, our efforts have not been in vain. The houses I was able to save from the fire have been undergoing steady repairs, mostly at the hands of yours truly, to the point where many of the buildings are habitable once more. God dang. Chiyo, unable to assist with the demand of labor, familiarized herself with the neighboring forest, and took the, on the role of gatherer, massed fruits, berries for the two of us to eat. She also showed me where her family used to go for water, a river in the forest in which two of us now bathe. Like so, we were able to secure the bare essentials, food, water, and shelter. We developed a routine, divided our duties, and eventually learned to trust one another with our lives, just like the real family. Oh my, if it isn't Chiyo-chan. Are you done gathering food already? As I wandered through the village, the mention of a familiar name caught my attention. Almost. Just one more basket, and I'll be done. <laughs> you really are a good girl. Koichiro-sama doesn't know how lucky he is to have such a wonderful young girl by his side. Following Chiyo's voice, I turned around the corner to find her conversing with an elderly woman whose name I had not yet learned. Ah, speak of the devil. Good morning, Ko. I, I mean, Nabatame-sama. Please, be at ease. Just call me Koichiro like everyone else does. I find it sort of odd that they would have both his figure head by his text, but also him on screen. You think you choose one or the other? Well, Understood, Koichiro-sama. So, are you here to check up on Chiyo-chan? Don't be silly. Ko is just looking for work that needs to be done. Oh, is that so? I wouldn't be surprised. Koichiro-sama just can't sit still, can he? Not until this village has been restored to its former glory. Unless you'd like to take over for me, of course. <laughs> Careful what you say. I might just take you up on that offer. <laughs> of course, you'd have to take over weaving clothing for everyone in my place. Nah, problem. No problem. Co? Weaving? That I would like to see. Um, I retract my offer. But if you need a loom, I might be able to make you one. There are only minor repairs needed on the houses, so as long as we don't take in any new vagrants, I should have enough spare wood. Oh, Koichiro-sama. That would be wonderful. You have no idea how much time and effort goes into making a single article of clothing. Is it really that difficult? I should be done gathering food soon, so if you need help... Ah... Uh, no, you don't have to do that, Chiyo-chan. My hands may be old and weary, but as long as they still serve a purpose, I'll be happy. Hmm. Besides, there's no way I could gather food like you do. Let's each do our part, okay? Yeah, okay. On that note, the elderly woman walked away, wearing a troubled smile as she did. Weaving, like so many other tasks undertaken by members of our village, required two hands. Knowing this, the woman tried to let Chiyo down gently, reaffirming her place as a vital gatherer. But for Chiyo, that was not enough. Even as this town has taken in migrant after migrant, Chiyo's sense of responsibility hasn't changed in the slightest. From day one, she's tried to do her best in every aspect, taking out tasks we both knew she couldn't possibly complete. And as the one person here who knows Chiyo better than anyone else, I know all too well what happens to her when her disability prevents Chiyo from doing her part. You know, Chiyo, even if traditional weaving requires two hands, 
The same cannot be said for loons. Would you like me to make a loon for you as well? Ko, are you saying that I might possibly be able to weave after all? I am indeed. Hmm. Besides, if I'm making one loom, it shouldn't be difficult to make another while I'm at it. Right, so you usually work on the same project? You can usually make two at the same time. What do you say? Do you want to give it a shot? Absolutely! I definitely want to try it! Koichiro, you're the best! <laughs> I'll remember you said that. Now, let's get back to work. I'm just about to start on the wooden bowls you've been asking for. So make sure to bring back enough to fill them, okay? Of course! You can count on me! Full of spirit once more, she dashed off with a skip in her step, eager to complete her morning duties. Whew, that was a close one. What was that old lady thinking? It may not be a rule, but even newcomers should have the sense to not shoot down Chiyo like that. And of course, the end result is that I now need to make two looms, despite the fact that I never even made one. Honestly, it's it sounded like this when I missed living alone with Chio. Even if it's more work, life was simpler back then. I only had to look out for Chio and I, and our duties were divided evenly, making for a straightforward, routine life. Now, this village houses a dozen or so residents, most of whom I don't even know the name of. Worse, half of them are too old or too young to be put to work, so jobs can't be divided evenly. Without realizing it, I've become the leader of a budding village of wanderers. A few hours passed by, since I spoke to Chio, and true to my promise, I greeted her with a pair of... Whoa! Words. Those are really... Uh, well, I appreciate the effort. You needn't say a word. I can see how terrible they are. <laughs> uh, yeah, it happens. Oh, don't be like that. They aren't that bad. They just need a little fixing up, that's all. Preferably by someone else. <laughs> you said it. The sooner we get more able-bodied men around here, the better. As much as I enjoyed the solitary lifestyle Chiyo and I shared, it didn't take long for the two of us to realize we didn't possess the skills necessary to rebuild a village. I didn't think they would stay in the same village. It sort of makes sense to me. Everything is right there, and they already know the lay of the land, and if the <clears throat> Kobakushi have left, then it shouldn't have any problems with them for a while. And It sounds like for the past year, they've not had that issue. So, for obvious reasons, I took on manual labor, but that didn't change the fact that I lacked any knowledge of woodwork whatsoever. Similarly, Chiyo didn't know how to sew, cook, or many other things she didn't know how to do proved too difficult with one hand. I slaughtered that one, sorry. We gradually lived along, of course, making concessions along the way. I phoned my way through the basic repairs, and Chiyo learned how to work around her disability. But even then, we were still amateurs. My shoddy repairs would not last forever, and Chiyo would often run into tasks she couldn't complete, no matter how hard she tried. Cheer up. You know I didn't mean it. You're doing your best. Just like everyone else here. And that's all anyone can ask of you. Thank you, Chio. I appreciate that. My pleasure. Now let's dig in, while the fruit is still fresh. Despite her complaints, Chio filled both bowls with a mixture of berries and fruit from the forest. She then placed the bowl on either side of the table and sat down, gesturing for me to do the same. Fruit and berries, yet again. It's been months since I last ate meat, and that minor luxury was only because Chiyo found a wounded rabbit while she was gathering food. Forget laborers, what this village really needs is a hunter. While secretly pining for the taste of flesh, I unconsciously began to drool. Hey, I'm glad you were looking forward to this. But if you're that hungry, just dig in. Following Chiyo's line of sight, I hastily wiped my mouth and started eating. In reality, eating fruit and berries every day wasn't so bad. There was some variety based on how far the forest Chiyo went, and the taste was quite sweet. Furthermore, after working hard all morning, the watery taste was rather refreshing. Even after eating a bowl of fruit, a bowl full, and even after eating a bowl full, I didn't feel bloated. Mmm. Nice work, Chiyo. These taste great. I was hoping you'd like them. I went deep into the forest for this batch, especially for you. For me? That's right. You've been working non-stop lately, so I thought you deserved a little reward. Aww. If you know how hard I've been working, tell those other slackers to get to work. Even children can pick berries, right? And if they took over gathering food, you'd be able to help me out more often. 
Yeah, children should at least be able to help with that. Children of the village? I mean, they're just running around and playing at the same time. Ko, don't be like that. Children can't discern between edible berries and poisonous ones. And none of them know the layout of the forest like I do. Okay, she has a point. Just leave the food gathering to me. And if you feel like you need a break, then take one. I was centerpiece. Chio herself began to eat the platter she had prepared. She joyfully consumed mouthful after mouthful. Not at all tired of the familiar taste, but rather than join her, I continued to watch Chio, deriving a strange sense of pleasure from watching her elation. It's hard to believe that even now, after living together for a full year, I'm still learning from Chio. Well, it's not like you lived together forever. I mean, of course you're going to learn new things from about her. Rather than worrying about the division of labor or fretting over the food I eat, I should be content with what I have. Especially after all that commotion over a year ago. Yeah. Considering what you have, it's not much, but at least you, you got something. After all, if a girl like Chiyo, whose entire world came crashing down without warning, is still able to smile like that after all she's been through, then maybe one day... Don't just watch me eat. You need to keep your energy up too, you know? I'm sorry that's just the same as ever, but you still need to eat. Noticing that I wasn't eating, Chiyo softly reprimanded me in her usual... St kind-hearted matter. Don't apologize, Chio. You've done nothing wrong. I was just happy to see you enjoying your food so much. That's no reason to not eat. You're the village leader. Not to mention the only able-bodied man here. If you get sick, everyone will suffer. Okay, okay, I get it. I'll eat too. You know, at times like this, you sound more like my wife than my daughter. Wh what? <laughs> Aww. Oh, she got a little cute. Cuter. It's nothing like that! I just don't want you to get sick, that's all! Hmm. You forgot the... Baka. But anyways. What's wrong with a daughter caring for her father's health? <laughs> Calm down, Gio. It was just a joke. She took a deep breath and glared at me, somewhat embarrassed by her own reaction. Well, it was in poor taste. Still blushing, Chiyo looked straight down at her bowl and started eating once more. Oh, Chiyo, don't you understand that it's a father's duty to make her daughter feel awkward? Comment below how many times a father's duty has come up in your, in your lives. Or have you witnessed it? <laughs> because even if our age difference makes us more like siblings than a parent or child. By this point, you are, without a doubt, my family. Additional two months later. Araki, put that down. You're just going to hurt yourself. That's a two-person job, even for adults. Y yes, sir, Koichiro Sama. Well, help him out. Azai, help your brother to keep the frame in place. Ah. I want that door fixed before any more bugs make it inside. Understood, Koichiro Sama. Watching all with pride and anxiety, I instructed my two young pupils as they fixed the front door of their new home. <clears throat> Araki and Azai both made a lot of mistakes, but they listened to me intently and continued to improve every day. Like this, Koichiro Sama? Yes, just like that. Be mindful that you don't pierce the sheets. One little hole is all it takes for bugs to get in. Making do with what we had available, the pupils and I removed the bulk of the house's front, old front door, leaving only the frame. We then replaced the charred wood with sheets, making for a lightweight door only secure enough to keep out insects and other pests. I guess that's what to do, at least for the time being. I would ration the wood more carefully if I had known we'd be taking, on in, taking in another family so soon. But if I that kind of foresight, I wouldn't be here to begin with. All I can do now is schedule another lumber gathering trip into the forest. How does this look, Koichiro Sama? Ah, very good, Azai. That'll do for now. You two should go tell your parents the good news, then report back to me after lunch. Y yes, sir! Araki and Azai bowed and then ran inside to inform their parents. Now would be my cue to check on my own family. By the time I turned home, Chiyo was already waiting for me. She sat in front of the living room table, exercising great restraint as she fought her desire to start eating without me. There you are, Ko. 
I was beginning to think you were going to work through lunch. I'll consider it. Me? Miss Lunch? Not a chance. I wouldn't risk invoking your anger again by not eating. Glad to hear it. Took my place on the other side of the table, directly opposite Chio. So, how are the repairs on the Kihei family home going? Are the boys doing well? They're enthusiastic enough, but it'll be a while before they're ready to take over for me. Still, it is nice to have some extra hands. I know what you mean. Kanachan has been a big help when collecting food and water from the forest. <laughs> you two really are getting along, aren't you? Of course. I've waited a long time for a girl my own age to come along. A little over a month ago, a new family wandered into our village. Like me, they fled from the Mariah Kingdom, fearing for their lives. Although they were difficult to accommodate at first, the family of five has since proven invaluable, providing much needed labor which Chio and I were previously doing ourselves. The mother of the family, another elderly woman, has been learning how to weave, and the father has been whittling down some spare wood in order to make crude weaponry. More importantly, the two sons, Azai and Araki, 12 and 13 years old, have been helping me with any manual labor. Similarly, their older sister, Kana, quickly became friends with Chio and has been learning the layout of the forest, as well as which plants are edible and which are poisonous. Speaking of Kana, do you feel she knows the forest well by now? I was thinking of sending the boys in there to search for lumber, so it would help if she escorted them while you continued gathering food. Well, I guess, but... Does that mean the two of us won't be taking any more trips through the forest? You actually want to walk through the forest with me? When I first came here, the last thing you wanted was to be alone with me, especially in the forest. That was a long time ago! Your former allies killed my family, and you expected me to just go along with you? Of course I didn't want to go. Yeah, when you put it like that, I can't really blame you. But I'm happy to hear that your mistrust is in the past. It really is easier to navigate through the forest with your help. Of course it is. You should know by now how reliable I am. But that still doesn't answer my question. Right, right. Our walks through the forest. If you want to go with me that badly, I suppose we could put Khan on food gathering duty and have her brothers help her out. It's not that I want to go with you or if anything. Ah, uh, Can't live with him. Can't live without him. <laughs> I just thought it would be nice. Chio hung her head and began to nibble on one of the berries in her bowl. <sighs> this daughter of mine really can't be honest with herself. You know, after all this time, she feels the need to hide her feelings from me. Perhaps one year is enough for two people to become a family after all. After all? The next day. You know, I get, a, get, I get the eerie feeling when Whoa, I see... This place is huge! Do you really come here every day, Nesson? When I see the text like that, it looks it looks like something bad about to happen, you know? It gives me that eerie feeling. Hey, look! There's a path carved through the bush. Azai, I'll raise you to the big tree over there. You're on! H hey! <clears throat> hold on a minute! Don't go running off on your own! Jeez! Uh, Why don't you two ever listen to me? Shortly after entering the forest, Azai and Araki ran off. Their older sister Kana soon gave chase, but proved no match for her energetic siblings, and could only trail behind. <laughs> that didn't take long. <laughs> you know how those two are. They may listen to you intently, but their sister is another matter altogether. Sounds like a normal couple, normal family matter. I guess that's just how children are. Do you have any siblings, Ko? Hmm. I know it's a bit late to be asking now, but you're always reluctant to talk about your past, so... It's alright. It's just my old work that I don't like to talk about. And no, I don't have any siblings. But I did have a couple of childhood friends, and they both had siblings, so I know what it's like. That must have been nice. As you already know, I was an only child, and there weren't any other kids around my age either. So even if Kana and her family had come along before our village was set alight, I'm sure we still would have wound up becoming friends. Though, I suppose it's for the best that they came afterwards. 
isn't it? I think so. Yes, you're right. If the Kihei family had fled the Mirai Kingdom before I did, their deaths would now be hanging over my head, just like so many others. So what were your childhood friends like? Were they good people? Did you remain friends with them when you grew up? Oh, um, my friends. It's a bit complicated. Probably. Is that so? Let me guess. One of them was a girl, and the other was a boy? You're right, but it's not what you think. Haru, she... A while after she found out what Ito and I had been doing for a living, she... took her own life. What? Wow. That seems a little... I mean, I can understand if you're, you don't like what your friends are doing, but to take your own life because of it? Oof. Uh, I... I see. I'm sorry, Ko. I didn't mean to. It's fine. There's no way you could have known that. Very? Y yeah but... Chiyo looked up at me with sadness in her eyes. I wasn't sure if she felt sympathy, pity, or a sense of solidarity. Given what had happened to her own family, but whichever feeling was behind that look, I couldn't stand seeing Chiyo look at me like that again. Forget about it, alright? Let's go find some lumber before the kids finish up doing their rounds. Okay. She and I walked through the forest in relative silence. In the distance, we could hear rummaging, in addition to the occasional gleeful shout or cry of annoyance. <laughs> You're never gonna catch me, Netjon! Oops, almost. You need to work on your leg strength, Netjon. Arrgh, hold still, you brats! Can you ever just listen to your sister? I'm trying to teach you something important! Yeah, whatever. Whatever. We're working men now. We leave the food gathering <laughs> to the women. Oh. You are about to, you should eat this for a beatdown, kiddo. Right, right. We fix the house, so you go get the food. That's how society works. Well, if you're talking about give and give and take, yeah, you do one thing, she does something else. But it doesn't mean you can't learn. You brats! Fine! Run through some poison ivy for all I care! Good luck getting out of this forest on your own! <laughs> Nachon? Did Nachon just abandon us? I tried to stop from my laughter as Chio and I listened on, in on the conversation being held between the Kehi, Kihei siblings. <laughs> Those three sure do get along well. You can say that again. They're like that every day. Yet, they always make up in the end. Indeed. They're just like how we used to be. I try to help you or ask you a question, and you just brush me off. <laughs> well, excuse me for not trusting a complete stranger. Besides, you were far from perfect yourself. I told you time and time again not to follow me. And whenever you did, you wound up getting lost in the forest. Hey, I was just looking out for you. If you say so. At any rate, you seem to have learned your lesson, given that you asked me to be your guide. Why wouldn't I? Nobody in Hotsu Village knows this forest like you do. So, Elder Spirit of the Forest, where do you think one might find lumber suitable for repairing houses? Right this way, the little traveler. <laughs> oh, nothing least cute with the chair. Chio led the way deeper into the forest, taking me to an unfamiliar area, although I didn't know the forest as well as Chio. I had spent enough time in there to know the area closest to town. So if I didn't know where I was, it was a safe bet that we were in pretty deep. I should really make an axe one of these days. I'd be a little helpful if you try to get lumber. Going this far into the forest just to search for fallen trees isn't practical, nor is carrying back wood over such a distance. The village is in decent shape now. I have Azai and Araki to help me. So I should have time to fashion a few more tools, with ample wood lying around from the toils of the former villagers. Not to mention the remains of several houses, securing lumber was never a high priority. By early days in Hotsu, 
For spent utilizing the resources my predecessors had left behind and using makeshift tools in place of anything more useful like a hammer or an axe. Well, you th I also sort of think there'd be some of those tools lying around. Maybe the, maybe the, uh, they maybe they need a new handle or whatnot. But do you think you'd be able to have the metal still? I mean, I doubt the fire's got hot enough to burn all that metal up. Yeah, I guess you, I don't know. But with the growing village, ongoing repairs, and the re occasional newcomer, relying on the existing resources was no longer an option. Okay, this ought to do it. What do you think? Did I come through or what? She stopped in front of a fallen tree, which had been pierced by a large rock as it landed. I still required brute strength to tear off anything worthwhile, and I needed an axe to take away most of it. But it was quite a fine nonetheless. You sure did. As expected of my wonderful daughter. You're never going to give this whole father-daughter thing a rest, are you? Like I told you from the beginning, we're far too close in age to be parent and child. Nobody in the village believes it anyway. Why do you even bother saying it? <laughs> Alright. Gio stared at me with a serious expression on her face, as though the tired as though tired of the farce. I know it's not believable. That isn't the point. Gio. What do you suppose the other villagers would think if we weren't parent and child? Exactly what they think of us now, right? Are you sure about that? A young man and woman not related by blood living together, calling one another by their first names without honorifics. Do I really need to spell it out for you? I still don't get it. You don't use honorifics with anyone, do you? And so what if we live together and aren't related by blood? That doesn't mean... You're married? Wait a minute! You don't mean... Thinks it's for herself, right? Only one year away from being of age, Chiyo could easily pass for a young bride, especially if her husband was a renowned samurai. But after being on her own for so long and spending every day simply trying to survive, such frivolous thoughts never entered Chiyo's mind. Y you must be joking! Who would marry a worthless samurai like you? Very worthless. Come now, there's no need to get defensive. Who's being defensive? I'm just setting the facts straight. I think the point is, it's not you who has to think of this, it's everyone else who has to think this. <clears throat> Calm down, Chio. I have no intention of getting married again. Again? Anyway, I hope that answers your question. I guess. Though, it still doesn't explain why we're father and daughter, and not siblings. Probably too far apart in facial differences? Mm. <laughs> you got me there. <laughs> so, the thought never crossed the mind, huh? <clears throat> to be honest, when I first saw you in that storeroom, I can only think of her as a little girl. A child who needed protecting, far too young and weak to be my sister. But I was wrong, and now it's too late to change our story. Th that's because we look so different, you know? When people point out our dissimilar appearances, I can say you take after your mother. Is that right? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. It's too late to change our story now, anyway. Whew. Now let's get moving. You get the boys <clears throat> to help you with the lumber, and I'll go look for Kanachan. Whatever you say, Chio. I think I've got it. C careful with that! You don't want to lose a finger! Oh dear. Relax, I'm fine. It's just like Papa showed us. After devoting a few days to stockpiling lumber, Azai, Araki, and I undertook a different task than usual. The village no longer required any urgent repairs, and we had gathered enough lumber to accommodate one more family should they appear. So with the knowledge their father bestowed upon us, our increasing awareness of the forest adjacent to Hotsu Village and more lumber than we needed. Done! My trap is complete! Cool. We began to make crude wooden traps. Well done, Azai. Now place the bait in the trap and move on to the next one. Yes, sir, Koichiro-sama! While the girls have been doing well in the role of providing berries and fruit for the village, the lack of variety was disheartening. 
Only once had I tasted flesh since coming to Hotsu, and every day I craved a taste of cooked meat more and more. So, with a wannabe weaponsmith drearily bit by biding his time, and his two sons more eager to eat meat again, I brought the three together for a new venture. Using string and sharpened wooden sticks, spikes, stick spikes, we fashioned basic traps triggered by pressure. By placing a few berries and leaves in the center of the trap, we would lure unsuspecting rabbits onto the string, at which point a wooden spike would then be pulled forward and stab the rabbit from above. Um, Koichiro-sama? I think I made mine a little too big. That's an understatement. That trap is far too big for catching rabbits. But you might as well set it up anyway. Who knows? You might even catch a bear. <laughs> or really tick him off. How about that? Uh, a bear? Are there really bears in here, Koichiro-sama? Probably not. Of course not. There's nothing that dangerous around here. Oh, Chiyo. I didn't expect to see you here. Done already? Not yet. I just thought I'd see how you boys were going. But from the look of it, you three still have a lot of work to do. <laughs> how harsh. We only just started, you know. We'd be further along if Adagi followed Papa's instructions. Hey! It's not my fault he can't explain anything properly. Oh, hey. His explanation was fine. It's your brain that needs fixing. <laughs> Arr, come here. Like usual, as I and Araki began brawling it out with hesitation. Good old boys. But typically playful, the two often fought, and all of it was one sly comment from either brother before they f their fists began flying. Hmm. Maybe I should teach those two how to wield a sword. I do some good to learn to discipline and to vent the frustration productively and help beat themselves to pieces afterwards. That uh, didn't take <laughs> much. Boys really are violent thugs, aren't they? <laughs> if you want someone to agree with you, Chio, you should really be saying that to Kana. Besides, there's no harm in a little roughhousing. Roughhousing. Even when they're this close to the traps they just made? Hmm. Yeah, that could be a bad idea, actually. Boys, stop that this instant! They both stopped at my command. They slowly walked back over, paying a little attention to the two traps they had just set. Sorry, Koichiro-sama. Yeah, we're sorry. Look, if you two want to play, that's fine. But do it away from the traps you just set. W whoa you're right! Understood, Koichiro-sama! <laughs> I'm going back to gathering food. You three have fun. I don't even have fun. Found out a word, Chiyo walks straight past us, deeper into the forest. Something tells me I'll be hearing more about that during our lunch. Oh well, Chiyo's message was conveyed, and that's what matters. Alright, you two. Back to work! And make sure to keep track of every trap you set. Chio, your sister, and I all need to know exactly what to look out for. Got it? Understood. Yes, sir! Koichiro-sama! Okay. I'm thinking this is a good place to stop. A uh, good little intro to a free, free-to-play uh, Steam visual novel, Wander No More. So take a look at it. Download for free. I mean, go th go through it yourself. I would definitely say it's some really good looking artwork. Uh, definitely a different style than my previous li line novel, but very distinct and really colorful with the two characters. Um, I, I will say that it's unfortunate that you don't even have a little uh, sprite, a little small picture of the other par characters: the old woman, the the two boys, Hana. I mean, it would be nice to have just. Even that much right now, I think. But the voices sound pretty good. Sound it sound pretty good to the even the age level that the characters are. So I think they've done a really good job with it. Uh, but what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Check it out. Links in the description. And if you like this video, please click that little like button. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to see more videos from me. And I'll see you again next time. Ciao.